Hey so guys, welcome back to my channel and to get excited because today we are doing another series of Architox, which is where I talk about your architecture questions and also of your architecture topics because today I was not asked to do this but we're going to do something fun which is talk about all of my favorite architecture books and let's just say it's not a small stack oh my god I like literally can't pick them up there's so many here you go I think I've narrowed it down to my favorite seven so seven will be too bad and I, I could talk about these forever but I will try and make each explanation short and sweet. So the first one I want to talk about is this book by the architecture firm Lewis Sermaki Lewis and they're also known as LTL. It is called Opportunistic Architecture. I believe they have a second book as well and I'm talking about this first because it's like the first architecture book I ever kind of purchased that wasn't like required for school. Um, just because I was super fascinated with their work and what they're known for are these like beautiful beautiful drawings that incorporate renderings and hand drawing skills and when I was a freshman they taught us how to do this in a lecture um, in Photoshop and it is something that I employed a lot throughout school because honestly I was not the best at rendering um, to begin with so when I could incorporate some hand drawing and make it look a little bit less realistic, it worked well for me because my renderings didn't look realistic anyway. So I got a lot of inspiration from this book. I've actually read it cover to cover, like on a bus one time, and there's just really fascinating projects in here. A lot of their projects weren't even actually completed, so they're kind of imaginary, but they're just super interesting. So this is a must read in my opinion, or you should check out their website. Once again, they're called Lewis Suramaki Lewis, and there's really great examples of their work online. So like I said, I was required to get a few books um, for school throughout the years, and these are good examples of books that you might want to read if you're kind of new to architecture. Maybe you are an architecture student already, and you just want to kind of learn some things. Um, the first one that I use all the time, actually, is the BCI, Building Construction Illustrated by Ching. Ching is a really important architecture um, writer, um, not really writer per se, he's really known for like all of his really clear diagrams. So this book talks about like how things fit together and are constructed. So roof frames, wood construction, expansion joints, masonry, all of that. If you're an architecture student, I'm sure you're familiar with this book, but when I'm modeling something, if I don't know exactly the dimensions or what it's supposed to look like, this is a really great resource to have and it talks about um, the down to the thicknesses, half inch, five eighths of an inch of what you need to do. So this is definitely a great tool and I refer to it a lot. It's cute on my desk and it's awesome. And another book that is also by Chang and also was required for me to buy, I think when I was a freshman, is this one which is the Visual Dictionary of Architecture. So this one has a lot of great diagrams as well, but it's a little bit more broad, I would say. Like there's broad topics about drawing, electricity, doors, concrete. And for example, it's more about the materiality of concrete rather than like the thickness of how much you should pour for like a roof deck. So um, it's kind of more uh, general in that respect, which is why it was required for me when I was a freshman because we didn't know anything so um, this is also a really good resource to have I have to say I don't look at this one as much as the BCI but it's also a good tool so this book may not be for everyone but um, I was not required to purchase it but uh, for a school project that I had in studio we were designing schools and my teacher was really um, interested in this book and we took a lot of our curriculum from it it's called the third teacher and it's all about designing schools, um, but really like in the 21st century, like very interesting topics that like I think haven't been talked about in architecture before or maybe like not in educational architecture before. And what's really fascinating is that um, one of the co-authors of this book was a firm in Chicago and my studio when we were doing these school designs we actually got to go to Chicago and meet the firm and take a tour there and they were Canon Design um, really really beautiful office and great work really they really have like great ideas about how you should collaborate and work in the office they're very hands-on with sketching and drawing um, as far as the book goes really interesting things there's just like um 79 ways to like change learning in the classroom so like number 15 for example is to display learning like kids should hang their work on the wall 
or 30 build close to home so school should be closer to home. I have not read this entire thing yet just because only for two quarters was I focusing on school design and then I had to move on. But it's really a great book and I have to say that this book along with the project that we did made me really interested in school design and it's something I'd even consider um, for a career. So if that's something you're interested in, good read. Um, if you can hear a vacuum, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so we're halfway through now, and I have one that's also probably good for beginners, but I have to say it's just a good resource for me to have too. And this book is called Architecture, Elements, Materials, and Form. It was a gift, and it's kind of like a nice little pocket size, and it's also great for someone who's new to architecture. Um, I still really enjoy this book because there's great photographs and pictures, but as you can see they talk about different elements of architecture all across history and the world. So there's a dome, for example, roof covering, buttress, pillar, a capital, column, wall. So like it kind of talks about like maybe the theory behind a wall and like how um, you know, to a normal person, a wall is a wall, but in the world of architecture, it can mean a lot more than that. So this is also kind of a cool little handy guide, and they really do a good job of showing photographs from all over the world. Here you see, like, Milan, Florence, and then this is all Italy, I guess, but there's Japan, LA, France, Rome, Germany, really great examples. Um, there's, like, these mosques. So all in all, cool little thing that I'm glad to have. It was a really nice gift that I received. And I said last three here because they are my most recent purchases. The first one is the building blog book, which I showed you guys in my June favorites. And um, this kind of intrigued my interest because it was about architecture, but the man who wrote it was a blogger, so I was kind of like excited. And I actually just started reading it last night. I've gotten to page 31 so far, and like, boy, this is going to be an awesome read. I can just tell. That sounds like really cheesy, but... It's really interesting and there's interviews with Archigram. The way that the guy approaches this book or his blog actually and then also the book is that he takes like three random topics and he relates them to each other through architecture and so far it's really fascinating and um, kind of talks about architecture in like a way that I've never seen it written about before. So I'm quite excited to read this and I'm also quite excited to add the blog to like my daily read list of blogs. So, um, so far so good. I really like it. And I have a book here that I coveted for a very long time. Um, I was living in Copenhagen and my friend purchased this book after our first semester because he was going back to the States and this book is all about Danish architecture um, in the modern age. So it is called The New Wave in Danish Architecture. One fun thing about it is that um, they have Danish and English in here. Um, the black is Danish and the blue is English, which I kind of love because I did learn how to read Danish pretty well, so it's kind of fun for me to like look back and forth, but even if you're not interested in that, uh, I'm sure you know that Copenhagen is one of the leading forces in architecture, and this book kind of discusses how they started approaching architecture in a pragmatic way. Um, it's really a fascinating book, and they do interviews with um, specific architects, such as like the Arca Angles, of course, and then they talk about all the different buildings very up close. I love going through it personally because I lived there, so I've seen a lot of these projects in real life, and it kind of like is nice. Even a few of these were renderings of projects that haven't been completed yet, and like one, for example, was Copenhagen's public transportation system, the Metro. And in here, when it was written, it was only an idea. And right now in Copenhagen, it's almost finished, which is really cool. So if you're interested at all in Danish architecture, this is a must-have. And it was really cool for me to, like, buy it while I was there. So, um, yeah, I have to say I haven't gone through the whole thing yet, but I'm really excited to have this as an asset for the rest of my life. Okay, I hope you're not too exhausted yet by all of my talking here, but I just felt like there were so many good books I couldn't choose. Uh, only a few. So here's number eight on my list. It is called The City as a Project. And maybe I shouldn't have included this because as you can see the plastic isn't off yet and I haven't even had a chance to open it. But I purchased this when I was in Stockholm at um, their contemporary or modern art museum, one of the two. And while I was living in Europe I became so fascinated with urban planning, urban design, new urbanism, gentrification, all of that jazz, which I think is really fun. Maybe you don't. Who knows? <laughs> and I became so fascinated in that that I'm actually considering doing my thesis on that. So I wanted something interesting to read. This is kind of 
talking about the city and it's a collection of essays apparently by one guy and why the city is a result of politics and architecture so it just sounds like a very interesting read there's also um you know what let's just take off the plastic while we're at it so i can give you a better look and it should have been off anyway i can't wait to read this as you can see i have a lot to do on my reading list this summer so i better get started and that's actually all eight of the books I had to talk about today. So please let me know, have you guys read any of these books before? What were your thoughts? Um, maybe you haven't read them. Let me know if you have. If not, which one you're excited to read the most. Or maybe you can recommend a new book for me to read. I would love that. Um, if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe and join in on the fun. Here on my channel, I do talk about architecture pretty frequently because I'm an architecture student. But I also do fashion videos because I'm a style blogger. And I do art videos because I have a skateboard art brand. So if any of those three things interest you, you should go ahead and subscribe, like this video, and share it with all of your architecture-loving friends. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!